Across the media, you've probably heard it reported, including right here, that a team from D.C. will be going to a World Series for the first time since 1933. But as Mike Wise tells mm -hmm. us tonight, the last team to play in a World Series from Washington may actually come down to semantics. Mike? Bruce, if we're talking about Major League Baseball, yes, the Washington Senators of 1933 is the correct answer. But if we're talking pro baseball, the story changes dramatically. The Grays in 1948, they played in the series. And uh, so it depends how you look at it. Uh, I can go with either one. This is Wilmer Leon Fields II, Billy, the son of the Homestead Grays right-handed fireballer and third baseman in 1948, Wilmer Fields Sr. His father's teammates included Buck Leonard and Luke Easter and the great Josh Gibson, one of the greatest hitters of all time in either league. We would always sit around and talk about, you know, what would Josh hit in the majors? Or when we would talk about Satchel, uh, I would ask him, well, compare him to someone in the, that's in the majors, and he would always say Nolan Ryan because of his velocity on his fastball. The truth is, many Negro League players could have played with their white counterparts including Wilmer Fields. I was at one reunion game in, in uh, Canada, and Dad was, he was over 50 at the time, and I saw him hit a ball like 385. Wilmer was biracial, a fact that actually helped his black teammates in towns that wouldn't serve people of color. He had blue eyes, and, uh, and he was very light-skinned, so the story was that he would go in at places that were, blacks weren't allowed during that time period and, uh, and buy food for the bus. More than 27,000 would come to see the Grays at Griffith Stadium, where Howard University's medical center now resides. They'd see every imaginable player you can think of, including a center fielder for the Birmingham Black Barons, who lent Wilmer Fields his jacket one day because he was cold. That center fielder was Willie Mays. After the game, I forgot to give it back to him. The jacket has remained in the attic for years. The Senators did not integrate until 1954, a full seven years after Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier. But Billy said his father never harbored resentment, that he was happy to be important to people after he retired. He was never bitter about it. I think when the Negro League started getting recognition, um, I think that was a, a big thing for him, and he became the president of the Negro League Association. What is not generally known, Wilmer Fields had five offers from other major league teams. He turned them all down to raise three children and be a husband to his wife, Audrey, Billy's mother, who passed away four months ago at 90. Dad, through his you know record books and everything, he was a great baseball player, uh, but I think he was a greater father. Wow. That was history. That was living history. Bringing out Willie Mays's black Birmingham, Bar Birmingham Black Barons jacket that he lent him, and it's signed and framed in a in, in, an, in an attic in Manassas was it, was, it was living history. Mike, as I'm watching that, I'm thinking yeah. of the stories that our fathers and grandfathers would tell about all the guys who were better than Jackie Robinson, Willie Mays, and should have been in the pros, but just didn't get the chance. Well, here's the thing, Bruce, really quickly. The, the 1954 Senators did integrate, but they didn't fully integrate. If they had taken Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, baseball probably would have never left Washington. Right, it's good stuff. Yeah.